Hello guys, this is Yinky. To all my returning subscribers, I say thank you for your support and love all the way. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as I upload new tutorials on this channel almost every week. So today I'll be showing you the making of what I call an asymmetric rose sleeve. So let's get started. So we have the picture of what we want to make on the screen right now. So you can see the beautiful sleeve. So the first thing I'll be doing is to show you how to fold your paper. So this is how to fold when you want to cut 360 degree flare. Fold into two and then fold into four. So after you have done that, take the measurement of your round sleeve on the elbow. Take the round sleeve is 11 inches in my own case. Then input it on your sleeve. So if you don't know how to draft a sleeve, there is a link to that on this um, tutorial. So after you have done that, I've marked the 11 inches on the sleeve. I'll put that aside. These are the materials I needed. By that satin, we call this one door face in Nigeria, crinoline. And this is the interfacing. This is called color stay in Nigeria. Very hard, but it has, it's not paper. It's um, like fabric. So then the next thing is uh, how to fold your material. The way you folded your paper is the way you're folding your material. So I'll be cutting together the lining and the main fabric here because I'm using the main fabric to lining the material. So I have folded into eight here because I'm doing only a single sleeve and I'm going to use the main material to, to line it. So the measurement I'm taking here is three inches this which is the radius three inches radius so if you are using round sleeve 10 to 15 you can still go for this or if it's up to that 15 you can increase it by half of an inch i mean 3.5 so just take it around like so then i have like 5.2 after measuring it round like that the circumference i have five and a half so five and a half times four will give me 22 and a half circumference which is more than my 11 inches and it's very very okay so by the time i'll do the asymmetric cutting it will even increase it more more than 22 inches i hope you get that so the next thing is to take the length of your flare which is 11 inches with the hemming allowance and the sewing allowance 11 inches is very fine for anybody 11 inches length so after i have done that i'm going to cut out um, the circumference like so I'll be cutting it out like so so I'll be cutting it out like so to have my complete 360 degree flare so I have a link on this channel on how to cut different degrees of flare using calculation or using your free hand so I advise you to watch it is very good video so here the next thing to do is to slit this out like so slit it out so after you have slitted it out, this is what you have. You can see a complete circle. And on my sleeve, this is the the one that the, the where, where you are going to join your sleeve together. As you know, it falls on the armpit. Then you note it. And this part I'm touching is the mid sleeve, sleeve cap, where the rose will be formed. So that's why I marked it like so. So I'm, I just, I put the mark so that I will know where I will be starting from. So instead of me to, to start from the, uh, joining i'm not going to start here i'll start from that circle where i put the circle. i'm not going to start from what, where i just touched before i'll be starting from the mid sleeve now where the circle is where i marked with the circle so you, you are going to put half in sewing allowance here just half in sewing allowance because you are turning with a lining half in sewing allowance to turn so and that's what i'm trying to input with my chalk so having done that you go ahead after you have input your sewing allowance of half inch down then you're going to take the round sleeve measurement make sure you notch it you're going to notch notch out after chalking i I'm, I'm trying to make sure the chalk is very visible and i hope you can see that so notch it out then that is where your measurement the round sleeve measurement will start from i hope you get that so you're going to start your round sleeve measurement from that point. That means whatever your round sleeve is, is what you will input at this point. So I will take my tape measure. 
Then I'll place it there and input my round sleeve. So I'll do that right now. That's what I'm trying to do. So in this, in my own case, the round sleeve is 11 inches. So when I get to 11, I'm going to mark it. I'm going to mark it with my chalk. So I have my round sleeve here, starting from that point. So since I have done that, I'll put a notch there to indicate that. So having done that, so from here to here is my round sleeve. I'll hold it together. I'm going to hold it. I'm trying to use my chalk to trace that point out also on a straight line to know where it will get to. So having done that, I'm going to hold it together like so. Hold it together like so. That means I'm dividing it into two. I'm dividing the round sleeve that I just measured now into two. Notch it. That's 5.5, 5.5 on each side. Whatever your round sleeve is, is what you will divide into two. Yeah, I hope you get that. So having divided into two, you're going to fold it into two again. That means you are dividing it into four here. Notch again. So you will have almost um, five notches now. Then I will share, show you how you're going to share it on your sleeve one two three four five so you have almost five notches so i'm going to mark all the notches right now with my chalk i'll mark all the notches with my chalk because they have usefulness so those notches will be our guide so having done that you're going to start from here as i told you start placing your sleeve from here after you have turned with your lining because i'm going to turn with lining in this case so the next notch will be here. The third notch will be on the joining. This is the third notch. I write three because it's very important. That's the third notch. And you're going to mark the third notch where I just marked it now. Mark it because it's where your asymmetric cutting will end. So having marked that um, third notch, you come here. You're going to divide whatever is here. You know we have 11 inches. Divide into two. You have 5.5, 5.5 up and down. Then you mark two inches here. Two inches here. So from that mark, this mark, you're going to trace it to three inches that you mark the, the, the number three notch. So you're going to trace it to number three notch in high low manner. So I'll be linking this um, here. So this will be a guide for me. M measure three and a half inches here so that whatever is coming from that end slit will meet this mark three inches here so i'll be linking this to this the mark the two marks together that i just touched i'll be linking it together in this manner because this is an asymmetric uh, form of sleeve it will just be like eye low so just connect it like so you can see the way it goes Connect it like so, then link it to number three notch, the third notch. Link it to the third notch. So I first of all link it to the fifth notch before I link it to the third notch. I hope you can see. On the fifth notch is where I measured 3.5 before I link it to the third notch. So here that I'm touching right now, you link it to the third notch. You see the importance of the notches? So in this manner, just follow the, the way I chalk it. Then just link it in this manner to the third notch. So it's an eye low form of, um, I mean, an asymmetric form of sleeve. So just go like so. So I'll be doing that now. I'll be tracing that out now. So this is the fifth. This is the fifth notch. So you're going, and this is the fourth. This is the fifth notch. So I'll be linking it up to the fifth notch then go to the the third notch from the fifth notch so whatever is here i'm going to measure from here to the fifth notch and divide it by two whatever is there i have 10 so i'm going to divide that 10 by two so i'll be having five from the fifth notch so i'll measure two inches here 
I have four here, so I have two here. So I'll first of all link it to this point that I just took. I'll first of all link this to this, then link it to the 50 notch. So let's go. So having linked it to it, you can see how it is. Like you want to cut a, a flounce, but like a short flounce. So I'm going to mark those parts that will be cut out. I'm trying to shade those parts that I don't need anymore. So those this shaded part will be cut off. I hope you get how I did this cut, this tracing and this cutting. It's very simple and easy to do. So if you can get this cutting, you'll be able to get the shape well. So I'm going, I'll go ahead now and uh, cut out the other shaded part because I don't need it anymore. So I'll be cutting it out. So it's not easy to cut anyway. So I'm trying to do that in such, such a way that you'll be able to still see it in, clearly. So I'll be removing the shaded part like so. So remove it carefully. So the next thing is to go ahead and high on my interfacing and I'm going to cut it out the way I cut the sec circumference. So I'll be placing it on this. I told you it's kind of made with a um, fabric. We call it color stay in Nigeria. So you're going to go ahead and uh, high on it on this. And after you have done that, the next thing to do is to place your lining and your crinoline. So this is what I have after ironing it with a um, moderate heat. So I have the one that does not have the the interfacing. This one does not have the hard stay. I mean the color stay. So I'll be placing it on it to turn it. So it will be the lining that I'm going to use to turn it. So I'll be placing my crinoline in this manner. So you can see I'm turning it with the line right away, but the crinoline will be on the material like so. So I'm stitching three materials together right now. The, the fabric that does not have the interfacing is underneath with the one that has the interfacing and with the crinoline. So, so you're going to sew everything together, but make sure you sew to the tip of the crinoline. So you're going to sew to the tip tiniest tip of the crinoline like so the essence of doing that is while you want to remove your sewing allowance it will be very very easy for you you won't be able to cut off your crinoline with the sewing allowance you're removing because i'm still going to trim off the the excess sewing allowance because i really need that to have a neat edge and a smooth edge so go ahead and fix your crinoline like so do not pull your crinoline do not pull it because you won't have that effect if you pull it. So I will be cutting it off right here because you have gotten, you have almost gotten to the end and I will be wrapping the edge off because the edge can really injure someone if you attach it like that or the edge can start um, losing up from that part. So wrap it up with your fabric like so to secure it and um, you are true with that. Then stitch this part up also. Then I'm... Um, done with that and i'll go ahead and remove the sewing allowance so the tiniest sewing allowance will be removed so secure this edge and also this is the um, longest edge so having done that you can turn it to the right side and give it a nice press iron it very well so having turned it to the right side i'll go on a short break and i'll be back in a short while <music> Do you desire to be a professional fashion designer in just few weeks? Then what are you waiting for? Enroll at Yinki Couture Academy today. Our online, offline and physical trainings are open in the following classes. Advanced class for 4 weeks, intermediary class 8 weeks and beginner class for 20 weeks. For inquiries, please call 0805-794-4477 or 0903-218-4192. You can equally connect to us on our various social media platforms at Yinki Couture. Yinki Couture, home of dressmaking techniques. 
so i have ironed it well and this is what we have so you can see it's really coming out nice and this is my sleeve this is the part that will fall under the armpit and uh, you're going to fold into two like so and touch the sleeve cap the middle of the sleeve cap this will fall on the middle of the sleeve cap this is where the rose will be formed so on this part i'm going to form the rose as i did on my pattern paper that's what i'm trying to repeat here so you must make sure you trace it to the mid and sleeve cap so you can see how i'm holding it notch it and make sure they align so make sure you're, you're chalking the right part before so after i've done that i'm going to chalk the this part out and put the mark the circle mark there so that i'll be able to know i've notched it well so that i won't be able to forget so fold into four again the reason why we are folding into four is that uh, we have done this on the circle if you if you could remember we have done this on the circle we have folded into two and we are folded into four so we are going to um, match those notches with each other on the matches that are on the circumference will be that are on the sleeve also we are going to be fixing it and matching it with each other so i'll be chalking all those notches out i'll be chalking all those notches out then i'll follow the notch while i'm placing the the the, the circle so after i have um, label all those notches out this is the mid sleeve i just want to make sure it's aligned as you can see this is where the rose will be formed so i'll start by placing the asymmetric circle like so i'll start from the mid so i'll start from here then i'm going to attach by half of an inch half of an inch i'll go ahead and attach like so just place it carefully can be a little bit difficult as in not that easy because i have joined the sleeve together but it's possible so just go ahead and attach it like so just attach it carefully so when i get to where i started from then i will stop so you know i started from the mid sleeve cap so i'll stop when i get there then that is where i will start forming the rose so i have gotten there now and this is what i have this is what i have so i tried it on and see how it will look so this is where the rose will be so you can go ahead and get your hand needle so i'm trying to put my hand needle so just form the rose just form the rose like so it's not something difficult to do at all just turn it turn it in then tack it with your hand needle so having done that you can get a brooch you can get a brooch or you can use bead you can put anything in the middle just to secure the roughness and to make sure it's um, it come out nice so all, all i'm doing here is to just tack the rose and make sure it is very very beautiful so don't forget to subscribe to my channel like and share this video and we have classes ongoing right now so if you're interested you can enroll for our either beginner class intermediate or advanced classes so right now back to our work what we have now I have placed um, just like a brooch, I have placed it in the middle. So just tack it down also. And this is what we have. You can see it's really looking nice, very beautiful, very, very beautiful and lovely. And it looks like what we want to make. It, it, it resembles it very well. You can see the effect of the crinoline is very, very obvious and it's very, very beautiful so this can be used to make any form of sleeve so you can use it to make a full sleeve an off shoulder sleeve you can even use this idea on a peplum depends on how creative you are so i will see you in my next video until then bye